So when I first started to learn Swift, and this was right after WWDC, one of the things that was the most confusing was the concept of optionals. And this wasn't helped by the fact that every new beta that Apple released, they kind of changed the way you had to work with optionals. But in this tutorial, I'm going to give you an overview of what optionals are and how you can use them in a variety of ways. So I've created just a blank iOS single view um, application and I'm in the view, the main view controller class. And I'm just going to get rid of the did receive memory warning here. Now before we talk about optionals, it's most important to just grasp one simple concept and that's a regular class property or a variable has to have a value. It cannot be nil. So whereas in, if you've done Objective-C before, we had a header file, we would define the property name and its type. And then in our application, um, if we tried to use it, we would need to make sure that it had been instantiated and that it wasn't nil. That's why we would have to check to see if this is nil or not. Well, in Swift, when we create a variable, we have to give it a value. And I'll show you an example. So let's say I'm going to create a variable and this is going to be an image view. So I'll call it image view. And I'm going to define the type as UI image view. So now you see immediately it's showing me an error. So I can't just define a variable and give it a type. Um, Again, in Swift, we have to give it a value. And we can see what the quick fix says here. Well, first, let's look at the error. It says class view controller has no initializers because we don't have any init um, overrides here. If we look at the quick fix, it's saying it's going to insert the required initialization um, method. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And that essentially um, puts in the init with coder um, initialization method. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to call super init coder, pass in that A decoder. So now we have created the initialization function, but we're still getting an error. And the error is self.imageView is not initialized in this call. So again, this is Swift telling you, look, you can't just define a variable and not give it a value. So you have to give it a value either directly here, I can instantiate it here, or in the initialization function. So I can say in here, image view is equal to UI image view, like that, just to define a new UI image view. And now the errors have gone away. So again, there's this strict requirement that when you create a variable or here a class property, you have to give it a value. It can never be nil. So let's actually get rid of this now and let's look at optionals because optionals is essentially a way to create a variable that can be either nil or it can have an actual value. And the way in which we denote something as an optional is after the type here, we put a question mark. And that's basically saying, look, I'm declaring this um, property called image view of type UI image view. And you know what? It may have a value or it may be nil. And then I'm going to have to check to make sure before I actually use this variable. So let's look at it, how we do that. So now I don't have to have to define this in the initialization function. I can come in my view did load here and I can now instantiate that image view. So UI image view like that. But now, remember, we have told Swift that this is an optional, which means this could actually be nil. So I could set image view now after, after the last line. I could set it to be nil. So now when I try to use it, first of all, you can see in the, the little code hint here, UI image view with a question mark. And that's telling me this image view property is an optional. So now when I hit the period, can see we have this little red T. That's basically saying I can't just use or call any properties or methods on this because it's an optional. So let's say I wanted to set the frame of this UI image view. What I'm going to do when I hit enter, you can see it's putting a question mark 
in front of the property name. And that's basically saying, look, if image view is not nil, if it has a value, then let's go ahead and set it to, and here we'll just set it to view.frame. So this will make it so that we won't get a runtime error if image view is actually nil, because this will only execute um, if image view actually has a valid value. And this is a way to protect yourself um, from having runtime errors because of nil variables. Now let's go ahead and make sure that that's actually true. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to comment out this line where we instantiated the image view. And I'm going to run this now on the simulator. And you can see it launches up and we have no runtime error. And that's because it didn't actually set the frame of the view to the frame of the image view because it knows because of this question mark, look, don't even bother doing this line of code because um, it's an optional and it actually doesn't have a value. So now the other way in which we can actually use optionals is to use an exclamation point. Now this is called forced unwrapping. This is basically saying, look, I know I defined it as an optional, but execute this line of code no matter what. The exclamation point says, Give me the value no matter what it is, even if it's nil. And now if we actually run this code, we can see we have a runtime error unexpectedly found nil while unwrapping an optional value. So this, if we use an exclamation point, is more similar to the way Objective-C worked, where you can define a variable and you can use the variable and it's going to compile, but at runtime, if it's nil, you're going to get errors. Now, let's say I wanted to actually um, always use this variable in this way with forced unwrapping. And I don't want to have to put the exclamation point all the time. What we can do is to actually up here where we declare the variable, change the question mark to an exclamation point. And that's saying anywhere where I use this image view property, force unwrap it. And if we do that, then we're going to have to make sure that this variable is not nil, and we're going to have to check for that. So now I can get rid of the exclamation point, and we can run this again. And again, we have the same result. But again, I don't have to use that exclamation point um, everywhere. So now if we're using forced unwrapping like this, what we would want to do is to do, again, similar to what we might have done in Objective-C, we want to check to see if this is actually nil before we try to use it. So we can use an if statement and just say if image view is not equal to nil, then go ahead and set the frame like that. So this way, it's only going to try to execute this line of code if image view is not nil and actually um, has a value. Again, this is more similar to the old style when as we were working in Objective-C. So that's forced unwrapping. But let's go back to the regular optional type with the question mark. And let's say we want to utilize this image view property. Well, one of the things we can do is called optional binding. So what essentially we're going to do is we're going to create an if statement and assign image view to a constant. And then if it gets into that code block, then we know it has a value. And let me show you here. So if we say if let im view, so we're creating a new constant equal to image view. So basically, this block of code is only going to be executed if image view had a value. So now we can do that same line with setting the frame. And let's go ahead and test that. So let's run this. And remember, we've, um, we haven't instantiated image view yet, and we're not getting an error here. So this is optional binding. And in this block, we can use this IM view constant to actually set up and use our image view. Okay, so the next concept I want to show you is something called optional chaining. So let's say that I actually want to do something with the image property of this image view, where I can do a similar um, statement if let img is equal to 
image view, and remember this is an optional, if I hit the period, we can see we get that little red T. And then I'm going to go to image. And now this block will execute, first it's going to look at image view, and it's going to make sure, does image view have an actual value? If it does, then it's going to go to its image property. Now remember, the image property on a UI image view is also an optional. So here we're actually testing for the image property, whether it has a value, but we're using this chain. So first check to make sure image view has something, then check to make sure image has something, and if it does, set it equal to this constant um, IMG. And I can now use that, so I can say, let's say var scale is equal to IMG dot scale. So I can now access it. Now there is a shorthand way of doing this as well. So let's say, again, I wanted to get the scale of the image, which is inside of this image view. What I can do is to create a variable, I'll call it scale, and I can say image view dot image, and again, we can see that question mark, dot, and then we see the T again, scale. And that's basically saying, look, if there's a value set on image view, then if the image property on the image view has been set, get its scale value and assign it to this variable. And again, this line will only execute if all of these things are true or all of these values are set. And if they're not, then we're not gonna get a runtime error. It's just this line will not actually execute. So that's an overall um, introduction to what optionals are. And remember, the primary thing to remember is that a regular variable or property in Swift can never be nil. It has to have a value. Swift will force you to give, you, to give it a value or else it won't compile. And we use optionals to create variables which are essentially can be either nil or they can have a value.